Hey everybody, today we're going to talk about disc flight mechanics and what affects the flight of your disc. Let's get started. Okay, in order to understand the flight of the disc, we first have to understand what the natural flight of the disc is. And what I mean by that is the rotation of the disc which way it's rotating. So say you're throwing backhand right-handed, it's going to turn clockwise out of your hand. The disc's natural tendency is going to want to finish the shot to the left. If you're throwing a forehand or a left-hand backhand, the disc is going to spin counterclockwise and therefore the disc is going to finish naturally to the right-hand side. So I know some of you are wondering, you're saying, oh, well, I threw a disc the other day and it went the same direction as the way the disc was spinning. Well, that's because each disc is made differently with a different shape and they have what we call different stabilities. And what I mean by stabilities, you may have heard these three terms that a lot of disc golfers use, and that's going to be overstable, stable or neutral, and then understable. And that's, uh, in reference to the stability of the disc and how it affects the flight. So the first one is overstable. And what overstable means is that the disc is going to fly along its natural tendency as much as possible. It's really going to fight to stay on its natural line, which I was talking about earlier, where it's following the opposite of the way the disc is spinning. So if you're throwing right hand backhand, it's going to go left as hard as possible opposite for a left hand backhand it's going to go right as hard as possible and then the next one is stable or neutral some may call it and that's where the disc kind of fights its tendency to finish uh the way that it naturally does and it tends to go along a more straighter line and that's why we kind of use neutral or stable uh interchangeably and then the last one is understable where the disc completely fights its natural tendency and actually kind of goes the opposite direction of uh, where you want it to go. So some discs are very, very understable and they tend to go way opposite of its natural tendency. And then some of them only fight it a little bit, but then they'll kind of tend to come back towards the natural um, path that it wants to follow and end up kind of more in a straight line. So there's two other terms that we use in reference to stability, that's turn and fade. So if you look at the discs or flight charts of discs, if a disc has more turn, it has more tendency to fight its natural, um, its natural path. So if its natural path is to the left, if it has more turn, the more it fights to the right hand side during the flight. And then there's fade. And the more fade there is on the disc, the more it tends to fight to its natural uh, disc flight. So right hand, backhand finishes left. It's going to fight very hard left the more fade that it has. And that's more, uh, fade is considered to be more towards the end of the shot. So let's take a look at this flight chart of a few different discs. I used uh, an MVP uh, disc chart. I like their flight charts. It makes it a lot easier to visualize what the disc might do versus just looking at some numbers and kind of guessing because especially when you first start out it can be really confusing to really understand uh what discs are, are going to do what so we're going to look at this chart there's a few different discs on here so if you look the closer down uh, it is it's going to be what would be considered a slower shot or something that's shorter maybe like 250 feet and then towards the end of the chart is what the disc flight would be if you were throwing it harder or somewhere around 400, 450 plus feet. Uh, and that way you kind of get a good idea of what the disc is going to do. So if you look at the leftmost disc, the limit, that is considered, considered a very, very overstable disc. And if you look at it, it doesn't ever go to the right hand side. It's always going to finish left if you're throwing a right hand backhand throw. Uh, and then it's gonna be flip-flop for forehands or left-hand backhand throwers. And then if we look at the farthest right most disc, the relativity, I hope it ends up on the right in the video, I'm not sure. But either way, the relativity is what you would consider an understable disc where it fights its natural tendency to go left with a right-hand backhand. 
So if you notice, uh, obviously if you throw it a little bit slower and not as hard, it's still going to finish left like it wants to. But if you see, if you throw it with a little bit more power or harder, it's gonna start finishing further and further to the right. So let's take a look at some different factors that can affect the flight of your disc uh, that would change it and make it look different than maybe what the flight charts are going to represent. So one way that the disc flight can change is if you yourself manipulate the disc with the angle of the disc when you're throwing it. So there's three types of shots. Uh, you may have heard these terms before, uh, but if you haven't, I'll explain them for you just so you can understand a little better. The three terms are hyzer, flat and anheuser so flat obviously is pretty simple and straightforward it just means that when the disc is coming out of your hand it's coming out flat so when somebody says that they're throwing a hyzer shot that means that their torso is probably going to be bent over a little bit more and the disc is going to come out of their hand at a more downward angle this forces the disc to follow its natural path a little bit more than it would already so if somebody's going to throw an Anheuser shot, that means that they're going to throw it with the disc at a higher angle, and they're going to force the disc to go against its natural flight path. So one thing to consider when you're looking for or buying discs or you're looking at flight charts, those flight charts are based off of more of a very slight hyzer or flat shot. And that's kind of where you're gonna see the disc flight true to its numbers or its flight chart. So now that you kind of understand how the disc flies, let's go a little bit deeper and talk about how the wind is going to affect the flight of your disc. So the first one we're going to talk about is headwind, and that's where the wind is coming directly at you from where you're standing when you're throwing. And what this does is it technically increases the speed of the disc, not actually, the disc is still flying the same speed, but with the wind added on top of it, it's like the disc is actually flying faster. So when you looked at that flight chart and you saw like the 250 foot area versus 450 foot, it's going to make it like it's going farther. So if you throw a 250 foot shot, it may actually be like you're throwing a 350 foot shot because of the added headwind speed. So in a headwind, if you have a very overstable disc, if the wind is strong enough, it might actually make the disc just stay completely straight. Same thing goes with a disc that you normally throw that goes completely straight. It may actually make the disc go to the right hand side and fight its natural tendency because of the increased speed with the wind. So the opposite is true for a tailwind. So say you had a very understable disc that went to the right hand side, you know, fought its natural tendency with a right hand backhand throw. It may actually go straight or even fade very hard to the left because of the reduced speed technically with the tailwind uh, same goes with like if you had a straight disc it may actually finish like an overstable disc instead and then your overstable disc is just going to become extremely extremely overstable understanding headwind and tailwind is very very important when choosing which disc you're going to throw because with the wind you really need to have the right disc selection to still get the shot shape that you want. So the next thing is crosswinds. And this is when you get a left to right or a right to left wind. And this can greatly affect the flight of your disc. So it's very important to understand it. So first we're gonna talk about a backhand hyzer throw. And what that's going to do is with the left to right wind, the top of the plate is going to be exposed to the wind. And what that wind is gonna do is it's going to keep pushing the disc a little bit more straight and then down into the ground, it's going to make sure that that disc doesn't actually go to the left like you're trying to make it do. This is important to know because it may change either the angle that you're throwing or the disc that you choose when you're throwing it because it can the wind can make it very hard uh, to go left when you're trying to throw a hyzer. So the next thing is the forehand hyzer shot. And what this does is it exposes the bottom plate of the disc to the wind. And what the wind is gonna do is it's going to actually lift the disc up in the air and then way, way, way to the right. And it's going to change the flight of your disc greatly. So I try to avoid exposing the bottom plate of my disc to the wind at all costs in any way that I can. I always try to expose the top plate of the disc if I have a really strong uh, crosswind. That way the disc doesn't uh, have some crazy lift and just get pushed way off in a direction that I don't want it to go. 
So I know this is a lot to take in and kind of understand. I know I was super confused when I first started playing, trying to understand the disc flights. I'll show you a couple of clips here, uh, just so you can understand uh, what certain disc flights look like. Uh, just the basic ones are going to be your hyzer shot. Your turnover. Your straight shot. And then your S shot, which is achieved by either throwing Anheuser with a very stable disc or getting a full flight out of a slightly understable disc. So I hope this helps you understand a little bit more about the mechanics of disc flight and things that affect the flight of the disc. If I missed something, please let me know down below so I can correct it or answer any questions that you might have. I try to get to them as much as I can. Um, but that's about all I have for this video. If I think of anything else, I may put it in a video later and I will eventually do a video on uh, how to buy discs and what to look for uh, and how to kind of like test them out and use them. Um, but other than that, thanks for stopping by, supporting the channel and watching these videos. Have a nice day.